Okay. So what do y'all think about what's up, Aaron? What's up, Doc? Hey, what's good? What do you so, think? What do y'all think about my sentiment? Let me get E the man first on this one. E, hey, what's good? E, what do you think about the sentiment? Oh, where you go? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about um um the sentiment of getting rocked in the conversation? So Aaron, were you listening the whole time? Um, I caught like the last maybe 10 minutes. You know, hold on. BT, I didn't drop her either. He, she logged off. Yeah, I never really dropped anybody for like, like that. Um, so what I was alleging was in the clip, once he said you were useless, mm -hmm. because, you know, just in the spirit of the boxing matches coming up, that you got rocked in that instant. The nah. last clip, hold on, don't get rocked now. The last clip was her, she got rocked by that when I said that, and I wasn't even talking to her, <laughs> right? For all intents and purposes. And then she got cut off, right? Uh, she 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 stopped listening. Cause she was agreeing um, the whole time I was actually talking about how men use women just for sex. Mm -hmm. right but then when i said that she got rock stop listening so when he said you are useless after that mm -hmm. everything else he said didn't matter now there's a sentiment in the chat that yo you disrespect me i don't need to hear nothing else you got to say what i say disrespect gonna come in a conversation in discourse it happened Mm -hmm. but I'm going to consume all the information so I can respond effectively and appropriately. I'm I'm very rarely going to respond emotionally. It happens. I'm not saying I never, never respond emotionally, but it's very rarely going to happen because I want to make sure when I respond after you be disrespectful, I put a dagger in the shit that you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what you think? Um, me personally, and um, I'm. I'm glad that happened on Wednesday because you do the reviews on Friday. I know that. Um, and I'm glad that you used the word average. See, it, to me, there's a difference between average. If you would have said, yo, you an average dude, I would have agreed. Bro, I'm I, like you say, you say you a four. All right. All right. I give myself a 2.5, maybe a four on a good day. But like, you want to use the words useless, nigga. You got me looking up different definitions of useless like it was going to change, nigga. It's, it's the same shit. That means I have no value. So I waited to hear what was his value to him that makes me useless. And your, and your excuse is, oh, you don't got a kid and no girl yet, nigga. Like, oh, you 33, you useless. To me, nigga, you sound crazy. That's why I, I set up my questions. How many kids you got? How many wives you got? So now you are disqualified for me listening to you because I already knew by looking at your face, nigga, you got mad kids. You don't know how many you got. And then you don't. And then with your girls, you calling them broads. I let him eat by himself. If you notice, I say, yo, why are you calling your woman a broad? That's something that I would not do. So yeah, once again, you're not an example for me. Then you going on to start talking about, oh, you might as well just start letting this shit go, young boy. So you basically telling me to go out here and fuck up my life just for a fucking kid and a woman so I could look like I'm a man to you old head niggas? That's why I don't respect these niggas, bro. Well, let me ask you. I understand. I understand your response. Like, we have the response recorded. Did you take anything from what he actually said? Do you know do you know what he was trying what he was attempting to say to you yeah but that yeah i got what he was saying after a while if you notice i did come back leon if you remember i said yo i get what you're trying to say mm -hmm. but like back to when we was talking early in the stream before any of us jumped on here and you was talking about yo some people was allowed to read some people was allowed to teach and some people need to sit they down Sit their ass down and learn. And that go for all ages. Old heads feel like once you hit a certain age, you get a badge that says, I can little nigga people. 
and there's people that was in the chat females that was on the previous stream that was trying to little nigga um jay and they got mad at me in the chat and they was talking shit like i ain't see them talking shit in the chat but they they got mad because i was telling them stop trying to little jay like y'all got when y'all and i'm I, me personally i at 33 i feel like that's gonna happen to me too like and i don't want that to happen where i hit that age where i feel like i got my i could little nigga badge people mm -hmm. and that's the problem right there just because you old and you got some experience don't mean that you could start running around start little and niggas people there this fair. this is what i want everybody to learn and understand when you get triggered though right because that's what happened me personally you me mm -hmm. uh Venus, because she was talking in the chat. People just going through, they watching it in real time, and, and this is how they feel. Mm -hmm. When you get triggered, that's what I'm saying. Rock. I'm just using a different term because we about to box in two days. Oh, yeah. It's today. Two day. Two days. Sunday. Right. Stop for a second. Right. Slow down. Don't respond triggered because you out of control. Right. If, if somebody come at me windmilling punching, I'm gonna do them fucking dirty. I'm gonna do them filthy. Them punches don't hurt. If anybody ever had been in a fight, you can attest. Motherfuckers swinging around, arm punching, that shit don't hurt. Yeah. Them straight punches is what wake you up during the fight. See, I said it in the chat. I said, yo, even if it was boxing, nigga hit me too hard. Ain't no come back to the corner. Come talk. I'm sorry. We are. I'm coming at you. Like, if hip, if you was my coach, you gonna have to grab me up and bring me to the corner. Cause I'm no like. That's just uh -huh. how. That's how I always been. And this, like I said, it's something that I'm working on, and it's something personal that I have like to deal with. It's like my temper and quick to snap. But like, my whole and then my whole thing is like, yo. Once you start talking that shit, talking about I get my young boys to stretch you out, now you even more of a clown, like to me. Like now you sound like you running around here like you want to be Jay. My Brown. mic, does my mic sound better now? Almost, yeah. It sounds like a, like a lot of more louder now. That shit just hurt my ears. Yo, cause I, I was talking through the fucking mic um the fucking computer <laughs> the whole time. That's why. <laughs> I was wondering why he couldn't hear me. We, we, oh. we can hear you though on both of them though. So yeah, yeah. But this, this one's loud, loud. Like we okay. All right, all right. Check, 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 check. Better, better, so, better, 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 better. Good. Yeah. So oh. Aaron, it's it's funny what you're saying because uh, I was sparring with a guy and I knew if I can get him emotional, mm -hmm. he was a better fighter than me, hands down. I knew he was a better fighter than me, but when he got emotional. I got calculated. And when you when you so emotional, especially when you talk about I'm not going back to my corner, I'm not going to reset, I'm not going to listen to my coach, that's typically when you lose. Yeah, you that's lose. not that, that that that's when you set yourself up, you, you, you forget the fundamentals and I think in these discussions people don't understand it, it's the same thing. So like I yell online and I do all that, but most of the times I don't I choose not to be offended. I'm not offended with what people are saying and when people start doing that saying, I might play the role that I am, but I tell people getting offended or feeling disrespectful is a choice. And if you choose to be disrespect, I mean, to choose to get offended, that's when you start losing nine well, times out of 10. So, well, here's one thing I, I agree with E, but here's what I'm not saying. You get offended, right? I'm saying that people like people will say shit that will offend you hundred percent. That feeling will come up. You get irritated, offended, one hundred percent. DJ, have you got some feedback now? No, it sounds like it's it's like. Now it's feedback. Yeah, it's like. Wait, how about now? Is it better? Like your your mic went down and the feedback went up. Yeah. Why he fixing the feedback? I just never understood why people got offended by somebody they didn't know, somebody they never seen in reality that they saw in these little boxes. I, I just never understood like somebody you never might ever meet, 
you might never and i know people say e you done got caught out of your square one time or this that, and third i'm cool i understand that we're human right i'm not trying to say that but what i don't understand is how people get out of their square so often and so easy because i think it's easy on youtube to get people out their square well i think when you got a platform like this it's kind of easy for triggering to happen because it's a debate platform and you're discussing hotbed topics sensitive topics so eventually some somebody's not going to be with somebody okay. and it's going to be a bunch of wind mirror say it again say it again it's better at all your mic is really low like I don't know where the feedback is coming from, but it's like a shh. Is I'm the only one hearing this? Like shh. No, I, I hear it too. Let me ask y'all: Is it is? Can you hear it now? No. I hear the. Yeah. I hear the feed more. No, when you mute, it's, it's gone. You it's gone. No, I hear. Him. No, I'm talking about he's talking about the feedback. The feedback goes away when he oh, mute. I think yeah. I think he got some wires crossed across to touch him. Old yeah. DJ stuff, you know, when they get the wires start touching. Got too many wires back there. Okay, so it's still it's still doing it. Just so I'm clear. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it's it's so it's like amplified when you speak into your mic. It sounds like it's something to do with some wire touching that don't supposed to be touching. That's, that's what it's about. Like, all right. I don't hear that shit. <laughs> oh, you don't hear it at all. I hear nah, it. he sound good to me. Wait, E, I'm gonna go on. Do you hear it? It's me. Tell me if it's me. I can I can hear it faintly. I can hear you more than I can hear the the, uh, the noise. <laughs> All right. All right, I guess it's not a big deal. Hey, hey, are you are you using um an iPhone? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> wow! 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 Um, so let me let me let me let me just finish this point real quick. I maybe I'll go back to the other mic. So just to go back to make sure, right? Um. I don't like it. I don't like when shit do that. Um, so it, you can be offended. Like I get offended too. You know when people be talking, talking shit. Like when they come up acting like, "Oh, do this, that, whatever the case is," right? So I get offended, but I never play my hand or I don't show that type of shit. You know, but it irks me. It annoys me. But I just don't play my card. You know, I don't play that card um because if i show my hand and people know how i'm feeling you can't get the drop on them you know you can't get the drop on them once you play your hand um and when you go crazy and a nigga already whooping your ass he gonna really whoop your ass you know so we got to be cognizant of that that level of behavior so now is being rocked different than being disrespected i think it could be both but it can't be different so say for example, when I be like niggas on YouTube broke, some of the niggas shouldn't be disrespected if they ain't broke, but they get rocked and feel disrespected because they feel like I'm talking to them directly. I, I have never said, hey, you, I never said, doc, I'm just using you for example, but I never said doc is a broke ass nigga. I ain't never say that. But when I say, hey, it's a whole bunch of niggas broke on YouTube, people like, are oh, you trying to shame me for not having money? No, I was speaking to the crowd. You just called a straight bullet because you didn't like what I was saying. So I think that's kind of one of those things that people understand is that this, I think disrespect is a, a direct insult to you. But if somebody kind of what DJ Hamp did to that girl, he's talking about the majority or everybody in the space. I think that um, that's being rock and you just taking it as disrespect because you fall in that category. So what do y'all think about that, Doc? That's a hard one for me, bro, because... I'm trying to use it. He he said use it like metaphorically, right? Because like like the way I like the way I look at it is like getting rock is getting truthful information. Like let's say your grandmother, she has seen a pattern. You bringing all these holes around her, and she like, baby, you got to get your discernment up. Your discernment is trash. You bringing a bunch of holes around the family. We didn't raise you like that. That's a tough pill to swallow from your grandmother because she's seeing patterns in you that she doesn't like and she's addressing it. Now, the opposite of that is just blatant disrespect. Damn. Give me a give me a, a New York example of like metaphorically. Like a nigga rocks. Like like 
like, like, in, the, like in the conversation like because you know like we talk disrespectful on the regular like so this right here okay this right here this this scene this nigga scared He know he got it. He know he can't say he's scared. He blame it on he gotta go DJ, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, okay. But um, what that nigga say? This nigga scared. He has to come with niggas. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga pussy. <laughs> Remember that? Cause he because the truth is he was scared, but he know he had to go. You feel it, me? It, it was the truth, but it was like, nigga, I don't want to go do this shit, but I do got to go DJ. Now, now, here's the other thing, though. And what I mean by rock, because he, this nigga scared could be disrespectful, but there's there's a level of truth that makes it effective. Mm. Right? Now, I, I think that's more rock than just motherfuckers being disrespectful. You know what I mean? But he was scared, though and so when you take yourself in that particular instance right when he said useless right it's 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 extreme in my opinion but when you reflect on yourself right here right now you are in a station of you figuring shit out you making progress etc right so i know you don't think you're useless but at the same time i think you think that you should be a little bit further along than where you are is nah. that yeah and that's funny because like that's slow, why slow, slow, like, down, slow, slow it down and then you can respond without without being interrupted uh -huh. so the rock thing is more so there's there's something there that does resonate but you don't like it and then it's said you know kind of out loud and you gotta face it but it's like a level like we don't want to necessarily admit it you know especially if they're as hyperbolic as he was nah. but, yeah true um i would say like maybe he wasn't listening to the whole conversation because i'm pretty sure it was before that i said like hey i'm the most hardest person on myself like because i remember he was saying um e, um e black was saying to me like yo you know do you have people that tell you certain stuff or like and then when i told him i said yo like usually people telling me like i need to chill out like i'll be a little too hard on myself and he was like words so you need to like relax and focus your your mind and start being hard on yourself and then here come homie jumping on the stream yo you useless bro it's like nigga like bro you trying to tell me like i need to bring more value to myself like nigga i know that bro i'm not some nigga about just sitting around just wasting my life away like nigga i know what the fuck i gotta bring to myself like and but that's Aaron Aaron, but one thing is, I noticed that you held on to the useless part. You really didn't hear what came before that and what came after that. He, like it's, it's like if I grab one part of the sentence, right? It, it, it's, not, it's almost like when we see clickbait online, we see like they, they, they'll take the, the one part that was disrespectful and it almost, I'm not saying that you're taking it out of context, but it was more information in that setting. You kind of get what I'm saying? All he was saying, cuz OG was just saying he wants you to leave a legacy. He just wants your last name to be like meaningful. He right. he said it in a fucked up way. I agree with you. But his overarching point was you need to start thinking about leaving a lasting legacy. That's really what he was getting at. But he made it was just a shit way he said it. But let, let, let's be honest, most of us ain't gonna leave no legacy. Listen, but, but, but you don't have to be a you have to be stupid rich to leave a legacy. Nah, yes. E, Leon, Doc, I know you ain't saying nothing, Doc, but listen, all of y'all, I understand that. We understand that, you know, and and what you said, E, like most of us probably aren't going to leave a legacy, but you know, most people think it's leaving a legacy by, you know, having a kid. I understand. I understand that. That is totally understandable. But when you come up and you and your first question is, you got kids? You got a girl nah nigga you useless you ain't asked me what am i doing in my life you ain't asked me what's my plans all of that shit came after you said i'm useless that and that's the problem that i have certain niggas want to be teachers bro you're gonna have to know how to ask certain questions before you start jumping down people's throat bro and that's just a black person thing like that's just regular shit 
ask certain questions ask like yo what are you planning on like e asked certain questions and that's why e was able to get more information e black was able to get more information out of me bro hey let me jump in real quick hey so what's up hamp and the uh, people on the panel how y'all doing what's good doc chilling so uh, a few things you guys were saying when hamp, well first of all the, the the topic of the show we just can't be wrong i can't agree with that more um i think in an argument nobody argues with the purpose of being wrong and then when you get proven wrong you try to hold on to that mantle you don't really want to let it go and so you really don't grow and learn well um, hamp came out and said the whole thing about can you be rocked and disrespected or i think you can be rocked disrespectfully i think what what happens is you know hamp says like he doesn't if somebody disrespect him he doesn't let him move him off this square i think that's a a, a skill that needs to be learned because naturally like if you look at us fighting right somebody hits us most people don't grow up with a, a some kind of background in combatives or have a skill set so we go windmilling and fighting and exerting all this energy it's not until later on in life you develop a skill that you learn how to refrain for certain things if it's a sport if it's boxing you like when e e the man said he was boxing somebody who was a superior boxer but he knew or was sparring with him but he knew if i can get him emotional i can get him off his game I think when the dude came at you and said you're useless, you know, whatever his intentions were, I think his words have meaning. And so when he used that word, that was disrespectful. And so at that point, it's going to derail the conversation. You did a show beforehand when you was like, uh, our delivery, our tone, when we're talking to people. And I'm of a mindset, the truth is truth, right? And the truth will hurt. But if I come out there and call somebody useless, right? What kind of response do I expect them? Or what kind of conversation in good faith are we going to have at that point right and from him not knowing him instead of him something i learned just in sales and everything instead of me telling you something let me ask you questions like he said eat eat black start asking him questions he start giving them answers a lot of times somebody will answer their own question so just to top just to jump in on all of that i think the dude was being disrespectful when he said useless he might have had a message in it but the minute you call somebody out their name and and this person feels as though they're not useless they might not feel like they where they want to be, but nobody, I believe, feels as though we want we were where we want to be. And you can be very highly successful and say, "Well, my my goal is still to reach two million dollars in income. Right now, I'm at one point five million, so I'm still not where I want to be." Doesn't mean that you're useless or not successful. It just means you're not there. So I'll I'll just uh, chime in on that. But doc, doc, we on YouTube. It's a level of entertainment. Like I, I get that people don't want to be offended and people don't want to be attacked. But on YouTube, we understand that we're speaking to more than the person that we're having the conversation with. So when we start talking about entertainment value, a lot of people do things in this space for shock value. Like if them two were sitting, if those two were sitting uh, face to face and they was having this conversation and he was really trying to mentor or help this young man get to the next yeah, stage of his up, life, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have used no crazy words like that. He would have tried to get through. But when you on YouTube and you got 250 people watching, some things is going to be more for the shock value. And I think some people just got to realize where they at and why people speak the way that they speak. That's true. I, I agree with you. Uh, it is an entertaining factor to it. However, um, this is the part where people get mad with YouTube, right? This YouTube thing, those words kind of translate into real life. Uh, your emotions are not YouTube. Your emotions are real, right? So I understand that like people can talk tough in front of somebody through a screen and then when they see him but that just to me that just um now it questions your character i believe you can have a conversation i know hamp said this before you can have a a dispute or a disagreement without becoming disrespectful and it can still be entertaining i think it does get more entertaining when people are being foolish and crazy because hey we naturally as human we like to see think about um uh, the gladiators right people came to the coliseum to see the gladiators fight kill each other it was entertaining violence was entertaining to them so i do understand that that's a degree of what we have here just but in an aspect of this conversation that happened in the clips that hand played with people jumping off out the window being disrespectful right and then we're not on question i, I sent a super chat up earlier Ham, you didn't read it either just wanted to let you know uh but i thought it was a it was pertaining to uh, this, that's what i'm talking about Doc. Yeah, yeah, Hold that yeah. nigga accountable that's it, it was like, it was yeah. pertaining to oh, um yeah. when you had when you was talking about shame in the females right and, and and then it went into the bible and i found a bible verse i heard it this morning actually a bible verse as it pertains to that you can read it when you get a chance i know you're busy over there with your microphone what what did you send me a verse 
Yeah, it was in Ecclesiastes 26 and 25. It was about shame, you know. Oh, I saw that earlier. Um, to Doc point about the gladiators, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to run and go see the shows with the gladiators, right? Everybody liked to watch the violence, right? But let's say Rome or whatever country, wherever the fuck they was at, they, if niggas start wilding in the street, ain't nobody thinking about no show like the gladiator. Everybody running. So everybody could come up here and want entertainment and all of that and niggas could want to come up here to youtube and talk tough but like he said when we in public it's a different thing there's a different there's a different type of persona so yeah this is a safe space it's the same shit that happens at at my job it's the same shit everybody walk around talking tough all day but as soon as i say oh i'm sick of this shit today now it's oh ah shit here we go but Eric, but that's the point. We got to have the mindset when we log in and we come to DJ hair, we walking into the on the, the Coliseum. This is the Coliseum. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Some people go jump off the rail. Some people go do some crazy stuff. And it's going to be the entertainment thing. And you understand where you at. That's all I tell people. Know where you at. Well, this is the thing, E. You have the mindset and the maturity to understand where you at. A lot of you jokers on here don't have that mindset. They take what they hear online personally and it, it's, it festers inside of them, right? So I, th- I do agree when we come on to these panels, it's like organized chaos. You know somebody's going to say something and the panel's going to go crazy. Everybody have different thoughts. However, I personally can tell you that I've seen people take things, per- that lady that had, had on there, I know she's from Baltimore because I'm from Baltimore, so I, I'm like listening to my, my family member in there. She's very disrespectful. Out of line, I'm happy he cut her off and, and the way he refrained from that Somebody who hasn't like been because I don't know. I don't know you personally, have, but have you always been somebody who if somebody says something or attacks you personally that you can reframe and uh, have some stoicism? Uh, not 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 always. Not not always. Not always. Not always. When did you, how did you get become that way? And when did you get that? So this this is a lesson for Aaron there, because like you said, when the dude called him useless, I can feel your rage and everything too, and I, I can believe it was justified, but I believe it could be handled better as well. So, how at what point did you become more like stoic or like I'm a, I'm a refrain from that? I don't have to go to that level. I think it's just a matter of like you just playing your hand. I think that's one thing that I realized, you know, um, in business, marketing, sales, right, confrontation, getting in trouble. Like you play your hand too quickly, right? You never get to drop on anything people will be able to discern you before a mile away you know um and what i realized is when when people have an opening statement that is um provocative they're trying to get something out of it they also may put in, be putting all their weight on being provocative right so if they are unable to provoke you their 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 arguments start to fall apart right you know because they're, so- they're wanting you to get triggered so that now they can lean on oh you emotional as opposed to having to really articulate their point well. Yeah, I like that. So let me read these super chats since y'all getting on me. 